By now, you've probably seen the draw for the quarterfinals of the Champions League, and my, oh my, you must have been licking your lips at some of the ties. Bayern will be facing the strongest Arsenal side in 20 years. No one will be expecting them to roll over the Gunners as easily as they have done in the past. In PSG Barcelona, we have two weakened teams, yet there is a storyline of a final audition for Mbappe to prove himself one more time to Barca's Clasico rivals. Xavi will also be looking at this as his last chance to cement his Barca legacy. The tie that we find most interesting is the one between the defending champions and the most successful club in the tournament, Manchester City versus Real Madrid. This is a truly heavyweight clash, and while Manchester absolutely battered Los Blancos last season, we have reason to believe that this season's tie will be a different ball game altogether. Here are five reasons why Real Madrid should not fear Manchester City this season. Let's begin with what is the most obvious. Manchester City are not as dominant as they were last year. Yes, they are only a point off top spot in the league and could very well win the treble this season. But the way City have gone about the business this season has been slightly suspect. We haven't seen their usual swagger and dominance across the fixtures. In fact, this season, their record against the top six is the worst ever under Pep. They failed to beat the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham, Liverpool and even Aston Villa. The way the latter two dominated them in the league was quite astonishing. Even though Aston Villa won by a single goal, Pep side lost possession 13 times in the final third against them. Imagine how many they would have conceded against the likes of Vinicius and Rodrigo. Recently, City's midfield was overrun by Endo and Co in what should have been a hammering from Liverpool. For all intents and purposes, it looks like there are so many ways for Real Madrid to get at them this season. Even if Pep wanted to tighten things up, he might find it difficult. You see, in Doku, he has an exciting winger who has quickly won over the fans and added that much dynamism to his attack. But on the back foot, he presents a problem that City has not had in some time. They are now more vulnerable to turnovers on the wings. Tottenham's opening goal in that 3 all draw of the Etihad is ample evidence of that. That makes it two players who are a tactical liability to the team's defence. Like Doku, Haaland is worth his weight in goal for his goal contributions, but he does a minimal job out of possession. This has become even more glaring now that his goals have slowed down a bit. I mean, some of his open goal misses this season have been so crazy that some fans have begun wondering if City would be better playing a false nine. In some years past, City didn't have to rely on one guy to impact the game or to get the chunk of their goals. They were stacked to the gills with these sorts of players, but today they have fewer game changers in the team. It sounds funny, I know, considering the impact Phil Foden and Julian Alvarez have made in supporting De Bruyne and Haaland, but just hear me out. Man City used to have many more impact players, the likes of Gundogan and Mares have not been replaced to a satisfactory standard. Mateo Kovacic and Mateus Nunes have been welcome additions, but they are nowhere near as good of a goal threat as Gundogan. On the right, the speed of Mares has also been sorely missed. Who can forget his goal against Madrid at the Bernabeu in 22? While Pep will be worried about his diminished options up front, Carlo Ancelotti will surely be rubbing his hands with excitement about his improved squad. The signing of Jude Bellingham has been a masterstroke in every possible way. Across all competitions, he has scored 20 goals and set up 9. Unlike the bulk of the Madrid squad, he has not won the Champions League before, so you'd expect him to be fired up for the clash. Pep Guardiola knows all about that though, having spent 3 hours trying to convince Jude Bellingham to join Man City over Madrid. Yet, not even Pep could have predicted how good he would be for the Galacticos. The impact has been massive, said Guardiola concerning Bellingham. It's a different team from last season. His influence is obvious and we have to try to discover what he does to control it. Guardiola added, Facing Real Madrid is always a tough challenge, nobody can deny it. They are an exceptional club and in this competition can control many things with the experience they have in the past. And if the past is to be taken into account, Real Madrid would be hoping that their rich heritage in the competition will help them get over the line against the relatively new power that is Manchester City. As a club, they have seen it all, winning the Champions League on 14 different occasions. The fans and the president don't take defeat lightly at all, and the team will be eager to avenge them for last season's humiliating loss. 
After taking about two years to figure out Xavi's Barcelona, Real Madrid have taken them to the cleaners this season, beating them two goals to one at the Camp Nou before crushing them 4-1 in the Spanish Super Cup final in Saudi Arabia. The plan for Pep's side will be similar. Last season, Madrid was stunned when Pep switched up the formation in the second leg. Overloading runs with Stones and Akanji worked a treat and the underlapping runs of De Bruyne and Gundogan meant that Camavinga was torn between covering them or staying with Bernardo Silva. This confusion led to Bernardo Silva's opening goal and opened the doors for domination by City. By the time the final came around, Inter Milan had worked it out, so it was no shock when clubs in the Premier League started responding to it as well. Don Carlo will be ready this time, though we cannot say how well he can neutralise City's attack or if he will even need to neutralise it. With Bellingham, Chouameni and Camavinga, Madrid could go the Liverpool route and try to outwork the City midfield. Vinicius could also try to isolate Carl Walker and take him out of the game. Luis Diaz has shown that it can be done. Man City were not the team Madrid would have wanted in the quarterfinals, but they would gladly take them on if it means that Real can prove to the world that they are still the masters of Europe. Expect nothing but fireworks on the day. So, who have you got in this one? Will Bellingham be enough of a difference to turn the tie, or will Phil Foden cement this season as his best and rival Jude as England's most informed player? What we can say for sure is that both teams will be nervous, but probably not as nervous as the winner of the Bayern Arsenal game. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.